Fishing opportunities in the ocean which surrounds Hawaii changes with the seasons. At different times of the year, shoreline fishermen know from experience when fishing is terrific for certain types of fish. In the winter months, some of us like to spend our evenings hooking these, ballyhoo, which we call ihe. When these ihe arrive inshore, we get out our telescopic poles which work perfect for catching these small fish. They make for terrific bait for those of us who like blue water trolling, and they are also dinner table favorites when prepared properly. <laughs> in the summer months, the Owama and the Papil usually make their appearance in our shallow waters. At those times, we take our short bamboo poles out of storage and head for the sandy shoreline. Yes, many of us still remember eating deep fried Owama in our younger days. And then many more of us know what a great bait they are to use for catching papil. In the later summer months, there is one type of fishing that I enjoy most. 40 years ago, when I first learned how to throw a net, we fished at night on flat bottom wooden boats. Our light came from kerosene fueled lanterns, and we navigated the fishing grounds with the help of a long, thick bamboo pole used to push the boat along. Over the years, our gear has improved, as you're about to see. The boat we're using today is made of fiberglass. The lights we're using are custom designed to work underwater and are powered by marine batteries. This specially made deck even has matting on it to minimize the amount of noise we make when we are standing on it. My fishing buddy, Keith Nishioka, is the mad scientist genius behind this setup. Years ago, when Keith began fishing with me, he got so hooked on throwing net, he decided to improve upon the system that I originally used on this boat. The first thing he thought of doing was to replace the gas lanterns that I was using with his waterproof lighting system. You may also notice the small electric motor hanging on the back of the boat. After years spent pushing the boat by foot or using a pole in our hands to move the boat, this improvement is worth its weight in gold. Another upgrade for those of us who enjoy throwing net was the invention of monofilament. At one time, all throw nets were made of linen, which soaked up the water, got heavy, and didn't open as well when thrown. Okay, system check. Looks good. Now, all we have to do is wait for the sun to go down. Joining Keith and I on tonight's trip is another friend who grew up with a throw net, Mike Matias. It's just a matter of time before we find something to throw at. It's kind of small, huh? Letting this one go. <laughs> nice moy, though. So many of us consider these threadfin fish, which we call moi, our favorite fish at the dinner table. In fact, in old Hawaii, these fish were reserved only for royalty. Easy come, easy go. Catch a couple months. Okay, let's go catch something we can keep. <laughs> Folks, this is no ordinary veki. See the striped tail? We grew up calling these dream veki or opake veki. It was widely believed that this fish caused those who ate it to have nightmares but only if you ate the head portion. The rest was fine, <laughs> we think. Oh, in this thing, so you, Keith can have that one. Yeah. Well, let's get back up and try again. There's one. Throw, Keith. 
He needs a second nap. Grab him by the head, man. Not by the body. Oh, now you're talking. That's what we're after. Good going, guys. One more fish and we can all go home and prepare steamed mullet for tomorrow night's dinner. <laughs> There's one. Done deal. Now we each have one to take home to the family. And that's all we need. Folks, a couple of guys to say thank you for the fun time we had. Of course, Keith Nishioka and Mike Matias. Folks, don't go away. A lot more of the fishing show is coming your way right after you catch this.